Hi, I'm Daisy, and a couple of weeks ago I went to the Tower of London, and I'm here to talk about that. We have my yeah, no, it's a vlog. Oh, yeah, no. hey. Come on, be a vlog. Quick shout out. OJ, Veronica, Nina. That's it. Aww. <laughs> Take me home. Can't you go? As some of you may know, I'm a GCSE student. I took GCSE history and we had a school trip to the Tower of London to find out about its uses over time from the times when the Romans were living in England and the first foundations they built on there right up to its uses today as, you know, a tourist place and an education centre and everything. I had the pleasure of going on this trip with some lovely teachers from my school and also a couple of my friends, Vivian, Amber, Lily and Indiana. Let's go! <laughs> All Vivian wants is a photo of yeah, And there's Vivian! <laughs> it's Vivian! Uh, yes. It's Viv! <laughs> we're, we're back and we're lost! Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You get me in it. Hi! It's Viv! We all hopped on the school bus and headed to the heart of London. So the first thing we got to do was um, walk right out from where our bus was into the heart of the tower, which is very nice to just appreciate the crazy architecture before we went in and found out how it was used. And the first activity we did was with our fabulous tour guide, who took us through the many, many, many uses of the Tower of London over time. And so far it has been used as a prison, a palace, a fortress, a menagerie, a tourist attraction, an execution site, a royal observatory, a royal mint, a refuge, a barracks, a home, the treasury for the crown jewels, an armory or a place to hold ammunition, and a museum. And our tour guide also told us about how we can use artifacts and um, analysing things that have been left behind and documents to find out what life was like back then. So the very first people to settle on the Tower of London were the Romans. And they left the country in about 410 AD when the whole city fell into disrepair. And they left the ruins that we can now see part of and which William the Conqueror, who was the next to um, build on the Tower of London site, built right over. He believed that building over the Roman ruins would give him a sense of power that he was the new conqueror of this country. William the Conqueror's renovation of the Tower of London was very much about establishing power and authority. So he built whole fake floors on top of the White Tower. So the, about the first two floors were used and then the top floors were absolutely <laughs> were just abandoned but he made the building taller to make it more imposing to people. It was also built on a hill William was doing everything he could to basically shove a neon sign up in the sky which said I'm the king guys! The next person to take over the tower was King John and then Henry the First and after that Edward the First. They started building a concentric style castle. It still had the use of a fortress and a palace simultaneously so they would help ward off attacks and also it would be a symbol of royal power and authority over the nation. At that point they only kept one prisoner and he escaped. So that was not very successful. Henry VIII was the next person to come across the tower. He wanted everything. He built a wharf. He didn't seem scared of attack at all because he built loads of new towers and apartments. All of that good stuff for him and the queen and people to live in. Or the queens because there were six of them. All right, we're back and we're just out of the education center. We're just eating a snack right now. Now we're about to go on a walking tour and look at all the places in the tower. <laughs> Number one, the Bowyer Tower. So the Bowyer Tower was originally built in 1240, but it was rebuilt in the 1800s, and we can tell this because um, there are arrow slits on the tower which are facing inside the tower, which, if you're an archer, is a kind of dumb thing to use because you don't want to shoot inside your own tower. If, if you get what I mean. It was recreated with the arrow slits on that tower just so tourists could more easily see what it was like. You'll see as we go through that the Victorians just recreated a bunch of stuff really wrongly to give people an idea of what it was like in medieval times. <laughs> Number two, we then stopped past some wire sculptures of baboons. They represented the royal menagerie, which all began when Richard the Lionheart was in power and he was given a lion. Clearly you can see the resemblance, Richard the Lionheart lions. Lions were, they were very brave and they were feared and they were also very exotic so it was the perfect gift for a king and especially for Richard the Lionheart whose whole 
brand was all about that, you know? And from this one lion, the Menagerie's collection grew and grew, and they didn't really have any idea what to do with these wild exotic animals, so it got to the point where there was a room full of monkeys dressed in human clothes, scampering around without a cage and drinking tea. But that all went wrong because one of the monkeys attacked someone who came to visit. So um, the zoo then moved out of the tower, which is probably a good idea for the people visiting and the animals. Number three, the White Tower. The White Tower is the oldest building that still stands in the whole Tower of London. So the entrance to the White Tower is really interesting. There's a wooden staircase leading up to the door and the door's above ground. This was a great defense mechanism because if the tower was under attack, all they had to do was torch the stairs and intruders would find it very difficult to even get in the front door. One of the other reasons why Millian might have built on top of those Roman ruins, but one that he probably wouldn't have admitted back in the day was that it was just cheaper because there were already stones there, you just put more stones on top. But the White Tower was one of the first ever buildings to have a toilet in and they hadn't quite figured out the hang of how to make toilets work. The waste ended up flooding down the side of the walls and that's not the nicest look to give to the public, especially if you want to intimidate them. So they had to clean the walls. The walls of the White Tower have actually only been cleaned three times in the time that it stood which is pretty impressive seeing as it was built so early. The White Tower was pretty kitted out in terms of defence. They even had anti-clockwise steps going up, which would give the defenders to be going down the stairs an advantage because it would be easier to use their right hand, while right-handed attackers going upwards wouldn't be able to use their sword so easily. Kinda sucks to be me because I'm left-handed. Inside the White Tower is also a chapel, and it was tradition that before their coronation, a royal would spend the night in the White Tower. On the day of their coronation, they would first be invested with secular and military power right there in the Tower of London before there was a march by water or foot to Westminster Abbey where they would be invested with religious power and would pretty much be able to have power over everything in the land, which is kind of what the point of the monarchy was. Number four, the Elizabeth Regina building. This is an example of a building which has been recreated by the Victorians to look medieval and it's where the crown jewels are stored. For some reason me and my friends just didn't have enough time I guess to go see the crown jewels we didn't get round to doing that. The next area we went to was the prison in the Salt Tower. This prison was no ordinary dingy dungeon. It was used to hold very important prisoners, often rich and dangerous prisoners, and uh, a lot of Catholics. Queen Elizabeth was on a mission to create a Protestant country at the cost of all the Catholics who just wanted to keep their faith. And at first, she allowed the Catholics to keep their faith as long as they didn't speak up about it too much or group together too much. And then she started quarantining them in their homes. Huge fines were if they didn't go to the Protestant church services and basically persecuting them a lot. And because the Tower of London had been used previously as a fortress, it was a great place to keep prisoners. But this prison was not the type of prison that you would expect to see. There was furniture, glass windows, which were very expensive because you had to pay a tax on them. So it was clearly a prison for the wealthy. They were even allowed to walk around outside, as long as when the bell was rung at the end of the day, they went back inside their cells. And the bell is still rung every evening just as a ceremonial thing, I guess. We can tell that there are a lot of Catholic prisoners held in here by all the Catholic symbols that have been engraved on the walls. There were protection marks and prayers and things in other languages. Some of the prisoners even hired professional stonemasons to carve their designs in. Quite a lot of people who were put in this prison didn't commit crimes that by modern standards would be considered illegal. Things like treason and heresy because Elizabeth I was very concerned with extremists who put their religion or politics over her ultimate power as a monarch. Next up, the Cradle Tower. So the Cradle Tower is still home to people today. There were washing lines out there, there's a pub, um, and there are cars around. And by the Cradle Tower, there are a couple of big models of cannons to um, represent the introduction of cannons, which the tower used a lot and they would keep the gunpowder for the cannons stored in the White Tower. This meant that they had to have bigger windows in the White Tower because if they lit a candle in a room where they needed light, but in a room where there was also gunpowder, that might not go well, there may have been a massive explosion, but because of the big windows, that didn't happen. One of the really interesting things about this place is that there have been two attacks on the Tower of London in its entire lifetime, and both of them have been successful. 
But it's a fortress, you know, why would that work? Isn't it designed to stop things like this from happening? Well, a very interesting case is the Peasants' Revolt. The peasants were seemingly just let in without any resistance. Some people think that it's an inside job, but we don't know to this day. Traitor's Gate. The Traitor's Gate is the place where a lot of controversial prisoners would have been transported into the tower via water, and hence the original name, which was the Watergate, but the Victorians renamed it because they were really suckers for that gothic vibe, you know? And opposite us, as we stood by Traitor's Gate, was the Bloody Tower, which was also renamed by the Victorians. Thanks for that, guys. You really made the Tower of London sound super creepy. They gave the Bloody Tower this name because it is suspected that this was the place where the princes in the tower were murdered by possibly their uncle Richard III? Nobody knows. That is still a mystery that is yet to be solved. Buzzfeed, get on it. This was the Byward Tower, which was originally a pub. None of us guessed that. Mint Street. The Royal Mint got moved inside the Tower of London after coin clipping started to become a really big problem. Now, coin clipping was when people making or trading with coins would chip off a tiny bit and then they would melt down the bits they chipped off and create new coins, which um, decreased the weight and therefore the value of the existing coins. It started to become a problem, blamed it on the Jews. Isaac Newton was the guy who supervised the new mint. I guess he was a logical guy. Isaac Newton must have been either pretty mad or pretty smart because he did a very controversial thing. He hired criminals who were masters of the coin clipping trade in order to find out a way to stop this. Henry VIII later introduced some low quality metals into the coin material to attempt to make the coins worth more. But once this word got out, they just dropped in value. They fixed the coin problem mainly by edging the outside of the coins, so if anyone tried to chip something off the side or take the edge off, it would be noticeable. It's really interesting to note that everything that's most important to the country at one time or another has been stored in the tower. So obviously the economy and money is very important to a country, and so the royal mint was inside the tower. Royals and the crown jewels were all stored in the tower at one point or another, which means the Tower of London was a pretty important site in terms of England as a whole and its history. The moat has a very interesting history. It had a failed attempt at flooding and then a successful one. It was used as allotment and a training ground for the fusiliers. It's been used to hold poppies and also a polar bear at one point, which would swim in the lake. That's weird. Around the time of the Great Stink in 1858, um, around the time of the Industrial Revolution, when sewage was becoming a massive problem, the moat was at the heart of that problem. It was recorded to have smelt like a cesspit, and it became very stagnant, and it's said that you can still catch disease from the bugs that live in the moat. When it held poppies, that was for a very popular display in memorial of the world wars. They flowed off the side of Leggy's Mount. Now Leggy's Mount is an interesting tower because they placed a cannon on top of the flat roof. It faced into the city. Having a weapon pointed towards your own city was probably not a great sign of trust in the community. The final place that we visited was the execution site. In all its time standing, the Tower of London has actually only harbored 22 executions and seven of them have been beheadings. You might think there have been more, especially given the bloody history of the Tower of London, but most of them actually occurred on Tower Hill, which was outside the Tower of London itself. And most of the deaths that occurred inside the Tower of London were very controversial cases and deaths that they wanted to happen quickly before people in other countries or other areas could react too quickly. For example, Anne Boleyn's beheading. There was outrage in Europe after she was killed and it might not have happened if they had done it in a more public area. Interestingly enough, 11 of the people that have been killed in the Tower of London were German spies who were executed in World War One. And with that, our walking tour was over. Oh, it's, hey. it's lunchtime, we're gonna have a little break, eat some food, on shade, so and watch the play. <laughs> After lunch, we got tasked with going through different quests, which gave us even more in-depth knowledge of the different areas of the Tower of London. Yeah. The bloody <laughs> tower! Did make it! Did make it. So. <laughs> no glass in the windows. Oh, boy. Oh, window. Hey, boy. What you say, boy? Oh, we go back, then. Like I take... Boy. Hit my phone, boy. Is your home, boy? Are you alone, boy? Come give me a dome, boy. Got a boy with degrees, a boy in the street. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. We're on the third portion of our... Yay! Why did you do the yeah, And now we have to do it anyway. <laughs> and during this time, we um, got caught by one of the beef eaters. Thanks, guys. 
the school group. See those wristbands. All right, so go get a teacher and have a rest of your day. All right, take care. We then spent the rest of the time walking around. We learned a lot more about coin making and played some fun games. Hello, I think they're dead. <laughs> they died. That brought about the end of our trip to the Tower of London. I think probably my favourite place in the Tower of London was um the area just outside where um they actually filmed the trailer for Spider-Man Far From Home and the characters get to go to London. They go on London Bridge and everything. <gasps> it's here, this is it, this is it, this is it! <laughs> Quick, get the photo! <laughs> That's it! That's where, it's 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 where the trailer is! And there's, a, there's a, the tower where Michelle leans up! <laughs> so, I'm really hoping for a Tower of London fight scene, something like that. Let's just hope that if they do get a scene in the Tower of London, that the kids from Midtown High get to learn just as much about the incredible and diverse uses of the Tower of London over time, just like we did. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you had a great time learning all about the functions of the Tower of London. And I will see you around. Bye!